Hearing about how cybersecurity is, affects your sustainability efforts, and, and Ron brought up great examples around you know, notable events in, in the news. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about you know, why, why OneSource is engaged here and, and who OneSource is. And so just a, a brief recap of we're one of 14 uh, U.S. Sonopar operating companies. Um, and Sonopar is the largest electrical distributor, privately held electrical distributor in the world. Um, and, and that accounts for engagement in 48 different countries, as you're seeing on the slide here, um, with, with over $27 billion in sales. And so we really, we really across the U.S., take a very holistic approach on, on how we engage in cybersecurity discussions, how we engage in uh, industrial control systems that you'll hear later on today, um, but also how we work with our energy team to make sure that, that what we're deploying is secure and to make sure that the installation that you have is secure. And so really we take a very consultative approach and we're, we're in a fantastic position to not only consult on projects, but also be able to design, deploy and maintain and support after the fact on a lot of the projects that you'll see. And really to do this, we, we collaborate with two key partners that are gonna speak later on today um, in both Rockwell Automation and Cisco who are industry leaders in their space. Uh, if you look at Rockwell, they're the largest a uh, company dedicated to industrial automation, purely focused around uh, automation systems. And Cisco, as we all know, is a leader in, in the networking space. And that allows us to really designate consultants that are very industry specific. And so we understand uh, at, a, at a broad uh, standpoint where your industry is heading and how we can help support that. And you'll see that throughout the presentation today on, on how we engage with a lot of the uh, energy management that, that Corbin's going to bring a lot later on today. Why, why talk about cybersecurity when, when we're having a sustainability discussion? And, and to some of you, it may seem somewhat disjointed, but the, the real intent here is understanding that for the last few, few hours, you've been discussing technology and how how you can leverage technology to be a more sustainable uh, company and how you can leverage that technology, uh, not just from a cost saving perspective, but to, to really take care of the three, the three P's in sustainability, right? Your people, the planet, and your profit. And so understanding how that technology is deployed, um, a, a key part of that is, is understanding that you're adding additional attack vectors for, for people that want to cause harm. Right, and whether that's through your building management system, through your microgrid system, um, through your electric vehicle chargers, which we'll talk, touch on in a moment, or your smart lighting systems, all of these are additional entry points for potential bad actors. And really what we wanna do is, is minimize that risk to you, minimize the risk to your facilities, and, and minimize the risk to the, to the planet as a whole. And so a lot of what you'll be seeing throughout the discussion is, is centered around that. When you look at cybersecurity, it has a huge impact on industry as a whole. The, the latest discussion is around $6 trillion lost global, globally um, to cybercrime, whether that's through ransomware attacks that you hear through the news, uh, like the Colonial Pipeline, um, or whether it's through data breaches of, of people losing uh, valuable data and, and very secure data. And IBM actually estimates that an average data breach um, incident within within a company because of our work work from home uh, scenarios and the additional attack vectors that that people have costs uh, costs a customer four point nine six million dollars on average for for a single data breach incident and so it's it's really centered around that profit right how do we make sure that um, the 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 profit isn't leaking through a cybersecurity attack, but also how are we making sure we keep our people and, and our planet safe. And, and people love to bring up attacks like, like the Colonial Pipeline. And it's, it's really more, um, it's more valuable to look at some of the studies sometimes that are being done. And when you look at energy, one of the, one of the most um, prevalent discussions in, in the market that you've heard today as well is centered around car charging. And last year, there was actually a study conducted by, by multiple universities that came together. And the study showed that there were actually 13 severe vulnerabilities in the leading manufacturers of electric vehicle charging ports. And, 
And what that means is through those severe vulnerabilities, they indicated three main areas of, of potential harm. And those are attacks against people, attacks against the, the installation itself, and then you know potential other entities that, that could be affected. And when you look at hacks on, for example, an, an electric vehicle charging port, you can think about things like being able to reverse power from multiple cars back into the grid, right? And that could cause catastrophic damage to your uh, infrastructure. You could think of it the other way, supplying, oversupplying power into a battery, heating that battery up and causing damage within the vehicles. But you can also look at it as a, as a potential entry point into your network, into your intellectual property, into um, the information that your customers have. And so really it's a critical uh, topic that is important to cover when thinking of sustainability projects is how do we make sure that these are deployed in a, in a cyber secure way? How do we make sure that, that our, our investments are, are well taken care of and that we're, we're secure moving into the future? And it's not just uh, electric vehicle charging ports, right? If you look at the majority of how your power is, is maintained and handled, a lot of it goes through industrial control systems, whether it's building management systems, whether it's main incoming power uh, and how that's handled through, through control systems. Or if, if you're a manufacturing facility, it's, it's understanding how your area and, and your machines are affected as well. And really it's important to have great visibility onto what's, what's happening with your energy, right? Um, and that also can introduce additional attack vectors for, for potential cybersecurity concerns. And so you'll hear later today from Rockwell Automation, and um, we're, we're fortunate to have Robin, Robin Priestley join us today. Um, and he'll describe the efforts that Rockwell has around their energy platforms. And then Robert Hubbard's going to explain how Cisco um, leverages their cybersecurity knowledge and, and their platforms to really help aid in the cybersecure approach. When you look at those control systems, throughout the last 10 years, there have been increasing attacks. And if you look quickly at these slides, I'm sure some of these you've heard in the news, things like Stuxnet, um, you may have heard of Red October or different ransomwares that are happening throughout, throughout companies. WannaCry is a great example. And a lot of these attack not only your, your computers and your standard IT systems, but they also attack your control systems and your energy management systems. So it's really important that we safeguard ourselves against these potential uh, bad actors. And so that's, that's a lot of the reason why um, it's important to have a very successful cybersecurity program. And that's centered around having a great before, during, and after plan. And what that means is, the ability to identify and protect before something happens, the, the ability to detect something is happening, and then how do we respond and recover and make sure that moving forwards, uh, we patch the system and, and we're able to recover efficiently. And so a lot of the things you'll see on this slide is, is really important pieces of understanding what you have, understanding how we can make that more cyber secure and how we can safeguard it, but then also how do we quickly respond and recover from it. And the one source approach to that is, is very holistic. The intent here is to really understand what the strategy is. What do you have in place? How can we, um, how can we collaborate? How can we understand what you have installed and what we need to make secure? And identify those opportunities for, for additional um, engagement, right? And then it's all around building a business case. If we, if we look holistically at cybersecurity, it's mostly about preventing bad things from happening. And so calculations on, on ROI are very important uh, because that's how we can show that we're safeguarding your, your facilities. And that's where cost estimates are important, right? Not, not every solution is scaled to uh, what you may need uh, or, or what you can financially afford today. And so it's really important that we build that roadmap out with you, that we understand how that's going to affect your cost structure and that we do so in a way that minimally impacts your business. And it all starts with risk analysis. And that starts with understanding your assets, what you have and where those assets are, what your intended performance is, is on those assets, and then where, where the vulnerabilities lie. 
right? So if you have a, a host of electric vehicle charging ports, it's important to understand where those assets are, how they're connected into your networks, what performance you expect from those assets, and then understanding what the vulnerabilities are, whether it's understanding the studies that have been done, the patches that are necessary, or the overall architecture that, that's needed to be employed to make sure that's, that's a safe operation. And that leads us then into great design and implementation, how we can guide you through physical and logical designs, fun functional specifications, how we can implement things like continuous threat detection to make sure that then you have the ability to, to detect when things are going wrong, right? Those are all critical parts of a cyber secure system. And it's a, it's a really a great um, point for one source to be able to collaborate with you and consult on what the best route is for your industry, for your application and for your sustainability effort. When you look at more of the recover and respond piece, it all ties in around how can we help you manage that? Do you need uh, help maybe patching those electric vehicle charging ports to make sure that they're safe? Do you need help patching your microgrid? Um, do you need support when bad events happen? Do you want us to help you um, understand what's happening in your network and maybe identify those potential issues for you? And that as we move forward has become becoming more critically important. If you look at a lot of the legislation uh, that's being introduced, there were over 250 different bills introduced to state le legislation last year around cybersecurity. And it, a lot of it is centered around how do you, um, how do you maintain a cybersecure system, but also how do you fund having a cybersecure system and what grants and, and programs are available to you. And so we can, we can help you navigate through that and understand what to leverage 